Somewhere late in my grade school days, my dad and I realized that we both wanted to get a telescope to look at planets and stars. Since then, my dad has passed, and I'm not getting any younger, so I decided I better do this now. It didn't take a whole lot of looking for me to realize that the Celestron 6SC Next Star Telescope is one of the most popular out there. And this is the 6-inch model, which is the most popular out of all of them. A key feature of this telescope for me was the computerized mount. Combine this mount with an impressive array of free software, and a beginner can do a lot of things with this telescope we couldn't have just a little while ago. I have to admit that the first days having this telescope made me think maybe I had outrun my technical skills by a bunch. But then I reread the instructions and watched some videos, and by the third day I did this. Okay, it's not Mars, but it is the moon, and that's like a quarter of a million miles away. I shot this with a simple digital camera mounted on the telescope. I had set up my telescope just outside my garage door, and that was just the first holy cow moment with my new telescope. A couple of nights later, with the same digital camera and now shooting video, I got this video of the moon. It took me a while to get the focus this close, and it can get a bunch better, but I was impressed. Keep in mind that, once again, I'm standing just outside my garage door, looking past the street light, doing pretty much everything wrong that you can when you're trying to look at stars in the sky. And I will work on getting all that other stuff right. This is a schmidt cassegrain style telescope. That means that the lens up front collects the light, sends it to the mirror and back, which then focuses it and sends it to the mirror up front in this little circle here. And that mirror up front focuses the light further and sends it to the back of the scope where we put the eyepieces or cameras. This is the fitting on the back of the telescope where we put the eyepieces and we can put a camera in there as well. And that angle adapter is standard equipment comes with the telescope. This is a focus motor that I added later on and we'll get to this later. The small knob below the angle adapter is the focus knob that comes with the telescope and it works fine. In the angle adapter is an eyepiece that we use to actually look at the image through the telescope. You can buy an adapter that lets you mount your cell phone to this eyepiece to take pictures that way. And I'll look at those in another video. I use this adapter to get my digital camera on the telescope for that video. I should warn you that you can spend a lot of money on eyepieces for a telescope. There are literally hundreds of different kinds and powers and features. I can tell you so far that I found out that the more expensive eyepieces work a ton better than the cheap ones. I'm also finding out that you probably don't need near as many eyepieces as we think we do. One of the most remarkable things about computerized telescopes like this is the amount of data they have available. This telescope has a number of ways for getting lined up with the stars. They have this so well figured out that once you tell it where you are on Earth and what time it is, you can point it at two or three different stars and it'll find those stars in its database and line you up. And that's a whole bunch of oversimplification, but it is true. This telescope also has a tracking mode where you can point it at things like the moon, tell it that you got it centered in your eyepiece, hit the button, and it'll move right with the moon as it moves across the sky. You don't realize how fast things like the moon and Jupiter and that are actually moving in the sky. You use the slew controls on the handset for moving the telescope to where you're getting started for alignment. I'm finding out that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on at once here when you're trying to use this telescope, and nothing beats some experience. And when experience fails you, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube about using these telescopes. A key to getting good images out of a telescope is keeping it steady. This is the base that comes with this telescope. It's got stainless steel legs, and it's heavy. And when it comes to telescope bases, heavy is a good thing. This scopes come with this red dot finder that helps you get started on the object that you want to look at. To use the stock finder, you have to get directly behind it so you can see that red dot. When your telescope is pointed up, that's not a lot of fun. The finder scope behind the stock one is the one I added, and that's got that 90 degree eyepiece on it, which makes that a ton easier for me. I left this clip in just to show you that getting directly behind the finder scope with that red dot isn't as easy as it sounds. But with a bunch of practice, I'm getting better at it, and it really does work. I'm going to end this review now, because there's a lot of other things I want to say about these telescopes, but that's going to take other videos. This one's already too long. So just stay tuned and go outside at night and look up and see how many nights are nice and clear where you could use a telescope.